Shea Patterson Yang. And I am Amy Estes. And we want to share our wonderful no bake holiday appetizer with you today. We're going to do a quick demonstration on how to do a charcuterie board. Charcuterie is a French term that refers to cured and smoked meats. We're using it as a little, little more broadly uh, to encompass sort of cheeses and fruits and meats displayed in a certain fashion. It's a, it's a term that you'll hear a lot now and, and it's just something that, that you can customize and make your own and we're excited to be able to share it with you. We are not wearing masks because if we were, you wouldn't be able to hear us. But we did have um, constructed a plexiglass barrier, so we are keeping our distance and we are safe. Another consideration is we are not wearing gloves today because this is just a demo that we're, that we're preparing for everybody to see. But at your own homes, you may consider wearing gloves, super, without a doubt, super sanitized hands. But you may want to consider gloves when building out this simply because the ingredients you will not be bringing up to temperature, therefore you will not be killing any germs. So it needs to be as sanitary and safe as possible. Last thing to remember, in many occasions, a charcuterie board is also known as a grazing board. And that is not something that we want to encourage this holiday season. So please ensure that you have a lot of cocktail plates and cocktail napkins out and around. We are actually going to do three different sizes of boards for you today. Um, we've called this one the who invited all these people board <laughs> and, and we're not encouraging you to have large crowds right now but it is a wonderful thing that can be used as an appetizer. We also hope that you'll be staying in for New Year's Eve this year and, and this might be a wonderful New Year's Eve dinner board for, for your whole family. It is something that could just be a meal when you want to do something a little bit different. One of the first things you do when you're when you're creating board is you need to decide, to decide what your foundation is. We have done a, a, an old bread board here and um, we recommend something like a wooden cutting board, a marble slate are good options. Something that's a solid color, a solid white porcelain is also a great option. Most people have something in their house that, that works well. Uh, we have also used a, a, a parchment piece here. If you're not sure if your item is food safe, it's really important to do something like parchment. So one of the mainstays of, of this particular board that we're going to do is cheese. Uh, I think for almost any board, that is a great starting point. And some of the some of the larger pieces we, we went ahead and placed and we can kind of construct around that. When you're selecting cheeses, I think three to six for a large board is a good number. It's a great idea to get them out about an hour beforehand because it, it uh, you want everything to come to room temperature. So you, you want to consider different textures, different flavors, maybe something that's a very simple flavor like a, we've got a cheddar here we're going to add in a minute. Uh, this is a this one is an apricot stilton. It's a little stronger flavor. One of the other fun things to consider is what are the co components? What's the contents of, of, the, of the cheese? So sheep's milk, cow's milk, and we found these fun little things which we now know are called cheese buttons. This one is, uh, the brie is a cow's milk, so we're gonna put the cow there. This wonderful one here is a chev that's a goat cheese with cranberry, so we're gonna put the, we're gonna put the goat one there. This one is a French Basque cheese, so this one is also a nice mild and we're gonna put the sheep one here. We've got a manchego here and I know Amy and I both really like that one. That's a, I think that's always a favorite. It's Spanish, it's salty, and it's absolutely delicious. You also wanna consider when building, varying your textures and your flavors. So it's nice to have sweet, salty, savory, briny. We love some creamy and we love some crunch. So try, so try to, engage all the senses when building out one of these boards. So consider that your meats and your cheeses are kind of your foundation. So those are your those are your trousers and your sweaters. And then we want to bring in the antipasta and the fruits more as the accessories. That's where your colors are really going to come into play and pop and bring live liveliness and festiveness to your actual board. I think that's absolutely true. So we also want to think about, as we said, colors in different places. We found some of these wonderful jumbo blueberries and they are they are almost the size of plums. It's a it's a great little blueberry, but it's also beautiful next to the colors here with the Stilton. Two other things to consider for regardless of the time of year, dried fruits are a perfect component in addition to your board because you can get those any time of the year. Grapes are also a, a fantastic option. You can find them in the summer and you can always find them in January and February. And if you buy, buy a variety pack of the um, grapes, you've got lots of great color. So I'm gonna layer on some of these pinky traditional 
grapes just to give it a little more color. And Amy mentioned too that we, we are making this one a holiday board, so we've done some holiday, some holiday flavors. We've got a fig spread and a cherry spread here. For a holiday board, you're also going to have access to figs, and that's something that not everybody buys for themselves. Maybe they're a little bit intimidated, whatever it might be, but they're absolutely gorgeous when cut in half. And so you can really add some great texture and color to your board with a variety, with figs layered in different areas around the board. This is a, a salami. We pre-folded some of these. I wanna show you how easily these um, just layer in and look pretty. And I'm gonna show you how we've done that fold too. So this one is about this size and, and salamis come in all different sizes. But this is such a simple fold. We fold it in half, fold it in, in a quarter again and half again, and it makes something that almost comes out like a little bloom. And, and when, you, when you roll them together, they are, just, they are just lovely. And again, it's something that's very easy. And you know, the wonderful thing about this board is there's, there's not a wrong way to do it. Prosciutto is another common uh, salami or, or meat that ends up on a, uh, on a board. And it's nice because they slice it super paper thin. So you can kind of just decoratively layer it in. And with that prosciutto, it, there really is no wrong way to put it. it. As she said, it is very thin and it just, it just gives a beautiful texture to the board. It almost is kind of a sculptural element. And, and I think it's a, it's a really fun option. This is capicola. It's also a cured meat and I'm going to put it here. It comes, you see, in the same size as the other, uh, as the salami did, and, and I've done a similar fold. Now for this one, I've just put them together and made kind of a little rosette of the whole of the whole stack. And we know that that fig and the capicola will be very good together, so that's part of the placement there. And at my house, we're suckers for sopracetto salami, so we put it on our pizzas. So we usually keep it around the house quite a bit, so that it's a little firmer, and you can kind of fold and cascade and and create a little decoration there with that one. And I know Amy and I are both big fans of these dried Turkish apricots, and I'm gonna add these in here, partly to give a little color next to it, and also to bring this yellow that we have in this little fun decorative cheese element that we added to this side of the board, so that we're, we're building those layers and getting, getting something comprehensive. If we get too many things that are too close in color, you, you kind of lose the detail of each, so you, you wanna break it up some. And you know what we haven't popped on are some green grapes, so I'm gonna oh, tuck those right. in over here just to get a little break in our color from our, uh, our log and our uh, red grapes. I think that's great. And we've got some more cheeses too. We, we don't wanna forget all our cheeses as they're one of our favorite things. And these are just some fun little mozzarella balls. And so, so again, some of the things we felt like made sense to be in containers and, and, and part of the fun of this is just to layer some things on too. Um, we found these fantastic green olives at Trader Joe's that are stuffed with uh, blue cheese, but they have a little more of an oil content. So you may not want to set that directly on the board, maybe if they're going to seep into some other items and, and uh, add a little more flavor to something that you don't want to. Then any little glass ramekin is fantastic. This is honey. Honey and cheese is always a wonderful combination. So we're going we're gonna to add that one. It is actually ideal to always ensure that you have pitted olives. So olives are a mainstay on a board, but you do not want to trick your guests by having a few with pits and a few without. So the safest call is to always go with pitted. A Greek olive is always a nice addition to your board, so consider that. They also have a little bit of a greasy content, not bad, but you may want to keep those contained in a little vessel. And so we, we took a shortcut. These are some wonderful pomegranate seeds. And I, I will say I have seeded pomegranates, but I, I am not uh, an expert at it. So we bought some that were already out of, the, out of the fruit. And I think these are just a wonderful little addition. We also bought a truffle salami, which actually was a really thin. It has a beautiful scalloped edge. So the nice thing about these is that I can layer in just a couple of these, maybe five or six, and they give a little texture. I can add them. I can actually layer these and give a little height to our board. Let's Everybody check. loves a cheddar, so let's consider slight. Let's consider putting these and adding a little pop of orange, and we can actually put these cubed in a few different places. I think that's a great some. idea. We're bringing that color in around our board. Absolutely. And so this this is a simple peppered salami. You can just kind of take them in the uh, in the the order it really that they came in and just kind of make a little roll. That's something that, uh, that you can easily add into your board as just another little pretty shape. 
It's nice to have a variety of crackers whenever you're building a board. In this particular case, we opted to put our crackers on a secondary board. And another fun thing that we that we uh, wanted to add, we, if we have room on the board, we'll put them there. If not, we'll, we'll find a spot. But we've done some pork rinds this year because a, a lot of people are doing gluten-free diets, a lot of people are on keto. It's a really fun, crunchy option, and, and we want everyone to feel like they're included. Another addition to board that's very, very common are nuts. You can take your roasted walnuts and just kind of fill in around in some openings. Everybody loves a nut. But we've got some stone ground mustard here and we're adding just a capful of this apple cider vinegar and a little bit of honey. Uh, the mustard is a wonderful addition to, to the meats and to the cheeses, but sometimes it can be a little bit strong by itself. And this just takes the edge off a little bit. That is a Castle Vetrano olive and it's one we just kind of recently became familiar with. It has a really nice flavor profile. It's almost something between a standard green olive and a Greek. It's not very strong. It has a nice salty flavor. So again, it's another way to bring in that kind of salty, briny flavor that we that we know we enjoy. And, and it's a fantastic color because fantastic we are color. keeping in the theme of holiday. So we're keeping, and it's a perfect green to, perfect. to and, complement our other greens. And it brings it brings some of that color then over to this side of the board, which I think we I think we definitely need. So these we think are just the most beautiful little peppers for holiday. They are a sweet and hot pepper, and, and I'm not much a pe pepper fan, but Amy, Amy tells me that they're, they're a milder flavor with a little heat on the back. Is that right? Sw sweet when you first bite in and it catches a little bit of heat on the back end, and they are absolutely delicious. And again, that bright red you cannot beat for adding some color and festivity to your board. She, I think this looks beautiful. I think it does too. I, I think we've filled in almost every square I inch, and, and still, and still not so much that we feel like things are going to fall off when you, when you start to cut it. And I know Amy, you had, had mentioned too, placement of the cheeses. These are things where we will we'll want to use a cheese knife, aren't they? Where we've got mm -hmm. some like this one is a crumbly cheese, so this is a good implement for that. But you want to give your guests some room to do those things. And again, this year we want to be just absolutely sure that we we have lots of here. You can help me, you know, add some. We have lots of these little forks out, and you know, let's be honest, they're also they're also kind of fun to buy. I'm a little run away with my. We we also like these small little picks. This is a little nicer one than just a, a normal toothpick. We do love these gherkins, don't we, Amy? I think we can add those little guys out there. Absolutely. Not. And so, would you just describe it as a small dill pickle? I you, think it's a small, yeah, it's a, it's a little mini pickle, and they are so delicious, and they've got just the right amount, just the right bite of um, salty, and they work so well on these boards. And the other thing too is, you know, if you wanted to do this board and make it a vegetarian board, that that's something you absolutely could do. You could replace some of these these meats with some cucumbers that were a similar shape and you could still do some of the, the fun staging. You could do some hummus. Uh, there are you know, carrots. There, you, can add, you could add vegetables in. You could just replace the meats with, with different vegetable items and I, I think that would be a great option. We're gonna transition into our, um, our next size board just momentarily. From our big board, we want to take into consideration some smaller boards that you might be building through the holidays or any time of the year. And this is always, always a perfect go-to for my family. Um, I know with my family that everybody likes a milk cheese, uh, a milk-based cheese, so I always gravitate towards a manchego. We always do a cheddar because that's a family favorite. So I'm going to add some of these to the smaller board. And then I really like the um, Stilton with the apricots. That is a, that is a hit at my house. Um, has just a little touch of sweet. So that's where I'm going to start this particular board. Also at my house, again, I mentioned we're suckers for the Suppercetto um, salami. We use it on our pizzas. We love it on our, um, on our boards, so I like to build that in. Um, the little truffle is nice, and again, we're salami freaks. So this is, we're fans, fans, fans. So that's a nice option for us. We also happen to like the pepper. Um, salami. So I always try to have that on hand and layer that in for a little bit of fun. The prosciutto is always again a favorite for us so I usually have that layered in. We really like fruits on ours so I have a tendency to always pull in some of the uh, Turkish apricots. 
I don't buy as frequently the figs simply because they're not at, they're not in season as frequently as some of the other things. But since we have them and they're absolutely gorgeous, I definitely want to add them to this board. So I'm gonna I'm gonna layer in a few of these, and then again grapes. Well, you can't go grapes. Can't go wrong with grapes at my house. Everybody's a fan. So we add some color there, and. We're also freaks for nuts. Uh, I've gotten, I, we, I grew up eating in my household. My mother made these um, cashews. So I've been making them for a hundred years and they're popular and we all love them and we're accustomed to eating them and people are disappointed if I don't have them on the board for our family. So I will always layer these in just because those will be a favorite and grabbed right off the bat. And then for olives, um, we always like the Greek olives, so I always try to have those layered in here. I do have a tendency to um, layer in some crackers. I don't always have room, so I sometimes have a secondary plate similar to that, but I think today we can get some of these in there. I don't need nearly as many because my group size is gonna be much smaller. Um, but I do like variety, and when you are shopping for this, you can find the variety packages of crackers, and I highly recommend that. A lot of times, because I do make these uh, from scratch, I do have extra rosemary on hand, and you can never go wrong with just tucking some rosemary into your display just to add texture again to, to what you've got going on on your tray. So I think that's a pretty board. I think it's a pretty board. I think you've got good variety here. It's not as expansive as the, as the big board, but I, there's, I'm not gonna get any complaints at my house with this board. They're gonna love it. So hi, Shay again. Uh, I wanted to give you our third board for the afternoon. So this is our social distancing, me, myself, and I individual boards. So this is kind of a fun thing. If you have a small number of family members or a small group of people gathering, you could make a board for, for every person there. And one, one uh, fun idea about this is that you can kind of customize, customize it to what you know that person likes. So this particular one, my husband really likes cashews. I've put some of the wonderful cashews that Amy made. Salami is another favorite, so I've added those here. We always love different cheeses, and that one is a piece of the um, Basque sheep's milk cheese. It's got a, kind of a nice mild cheese. These are a fun little thing we added. They are called lady apples. They're very small, and they have a, just a wonderful sweet flavor. So it's, it's a fun thing that, that becomes your garnish, but it's still something that's, that's absolutely edible. So I'm gonna create another one here, and we've got, we've got another, another version of it here on a little board, but this is just a salad plate size. So the, the great thing about this is you already have these in your cabinet. It's a, an easy thing to add and, and do something fun with. So I'm gonna put a little bit of this cherry preserves in a dish here. The cherries are, are a wonderful seasonal thing. They're also just great with the different cheeses. So I think I'm gonna use some of this, uh, some of this manchego for this one, manchego for this one. And we'll just do a simple cut here where, where again, this can be rustic. We're not trying to get perfect slices and it's even something that's easy to crumble and that's a great way for your, for your guests to eat it. So that's kind of a fun thing here. The cherry is also really good with the salami. So we'll add a little bit of that there. We've already got these folded and again with the round shape of this plate you can kind of you can kind of make something a center or, or make it a asymmetrical whatever whatever appeals to your eye and you know there's again never a, never a wrong way to do it here when you're putting together something that you enjoy I love these little small kind of salami medallions they're they're fun because they're really just a bite size and I think it's a great thing to to grab and, and it's uh, it's small enough that you can grab it with a piece of cheese or something else if you want to. I'm gonna get a little bit more of the green color there. Actually, on the green plate, I think I'm gonna do I think I'm gonna do these. You you have to kind of factor in what the color of the base is that you're using too. I think we'll do a few of these bright red peppers. My husband also really likes peppers. My son also likes peppers and nuts. So I think these would be uh, these would be trays that they might be feuding over. So that's one of the reasons you just have to make sure you have enough that, uh, that there's no sibling rivalry and, and everyone can pick their own. 
Now, another thing I'm gonna add specifically for, for my house right now is we are doing a keto diet. So we love to be able to have a few things that have a little crunch, but we're not doing traditional crackers right now. So it's, it's a nice option for us just to have a few of the pork rinds. I think I'm gonna add some more of this cheese here for balance. Put a small, just small spoon in there and maybe just a little bit more of the, I'll do a little bit of this peppered sunlight too. That's a, that's always a discussion at my house. I'm not a big pepper fan, but everybody else is. So they try to sneak it into things like I won't know, but I know. Anyway, um, here are our three social distancing me, myself, and I boards that you can easily tailor for the taste of your individual guests or your family members. It's a really fun thing to do while watching TV. You can just grab your plate and eat, or, or just, again, a fun, a fun meal. And uh, like, like Amy did with hers, it's just something nice to do something a little bit different sometimes. So we, we certainly hope that you've enjoyed these ideas and however you're celebrating your, your holiday with food, we hope that we've given you a few things that you can incorporate. So we're back. Uh, we, we hope we provided you a wonderful holiday appetizer, but really what's a holiday appetizer without a nice tablescape to go along with it? So we wanted to show you something that literally is a three minute centerpiece. This is, this is a, a version of it. It's just some very simple ornaments, uh, a glass vase. I've used live cranberries and I've used an LED candle. Uh, I always think that something live is a nice touch. So these are little juniper sprigs that came straight from my yard. So here's our clear candle holder and if you don't have something like this a clear bowl will work something low is fine too uh, there are lots of there are lots of easy options for this so I'm just gonna put my I'm gonna put my um, candle in first and as you see I need I need help because they they do spill out a little bit oops and that one that one's a little bit too live we'll just go ahead and get rid of that one And you could always use you could always use you know little glass beads or things like that. Again, I, I always tend towards something that is fresh and natural around the holiday. I think that it adds an element to a warmth really to the holidays. So these are just some very simple ornaments. Uh, we all have ornaments sitting around, and this is a dinner plate size plate. So that's again something that you can pull out of your cabinet. We're not asking you to go get or not suggesting that you go get something different. So you, you can just kind of arrange this by different sizes and colors and you can get a feel for, for what is the best, uh, the best number depending on the size of your ornament. So that's a nice fit. It's on there sort of firmly, but they fit in, but they're not crowding each other. So it's lovely just like this. If you wanted to add something, these little red berries came directly out of the yard. And you know, again, I, I love to put in something live if we, if we have it, I think you might as well use it. And most of the time, things will last for several days. And because technology uh, has you know, finally caught up with candles, look, we can, we can hit our on button and turn on our LED candle. So here you've got literally your three minute centerpiece. I wanted to quickly mention our pumpkins too. These are actually real pumpkins and gourds and leftover from Thanksgiving and we, we spray painted those and I, I think that they make a lovely arrangement. And again, it was a, you know, a 10 minute modification with something to, to upcycle something that we already have. Absolutely, these, these pumpkins last well into the new year. So if you can recycle them, upcycle them. Upcycle them. And give a, a coat of uh, metallic paint on them, I think it instantly turns them into um, another holiday. And, and you can use them on your, uh, on your, your board for New Year's Eve. <laughs> there you go. But, but again, you know, thank you for inviting us uh, to, to spend a little time with you and, and uh, however you celebrate your holidays, we appreciate you letting us have a small part and, and we certainly wish, uh, wish everyone a happy and healthy holiday.